It was eight weeks ago tomorrow, the last time that a Soyuz spacecraft returned to Earth, bringing International Space Station crew members home. Uh, in this particular case, after 188 days in space, more than 3,000 orbits of the Earth, totaling some 79 million miles, it delivered cosmonaut Michael Turin, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, and NASA's Rick Mastrakio, who joins us here in the flight control room this morning. Rick, it's nice to see you back on Earth. Uh, good morning, <laughs> Pat. Happy to be here. Uh, we spend an awful lot of time talking about how astronauts take care of themselves on orbit. In fact, I've done it already this morning. Uh, to get re prepared to return to a one-gravity environment, so mm -hmm. first question is, how you doing? How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. Uh, you know, we exercise quite a bit on board space station. A couple hours a day, I pushed myself very hard in the hopes that it would make my life easier after I landed. And I think I was pretty successful. I, th I felt a lot better than I expected. I thought it would take uh, many, many weeks to really to feel good. But uh, I had some vestibular for a couple hours. That went away pretty quickly. And uh, in terms of muscle strength, um, my strength never uh, didn't change from pre-flight, so I'm feeling pretty good. That is that is an improvement, I think, over much earlier in the station program where astronauts came home and felt pretty crummy for quite a long time. Do you think that the work that you're doing is what's made the difference? Yeah, of course. You know, the, uh, the, the engineers, the scientists, the doctors, they're getting much smarter. They're figuring out the right exercises for us. We got better equipment. And so uh, all, all that comes together. And if you work hard on orbit and do what the, uh, the exercise folks tell you, you come back pretty good shape. Any thoughts about improvements that could be made in that area or things you might want to do? You know, there's always room for improvement. One of, the, one of the things is that we actually have to spend two, two and a half hours a day exercising. So the goal now would be try to now figure out what exercise can we do but shorten that length of time so that the crew member can spend more time doing science and doing maintenance and not as much time exercising but still come back feeling as good and being as healthy as he is. This mission was your first flight in a Soyuz spacecraft. Mm -hmm. What was that like? <laughs> Soyuz is, a, I flew space shuttle three times, so Soyuz is obviously a quite a different vehicle. Space shuttle is much bigger, much roomier, has incredible capabilities, whereas the Soyuz is a very small, very compact vehicle, but also you know very reliable, very efficient. So. Uh, Going up wasn't much different, but coming back it was a, it was quite a bit of a kind of I called it the wild ride <laughs> to come home, and uh, it was quite interesting and uh, it was actually kind of fun. A bumpy ride, or when you it say was, a wild uh, yeah, ride, yeah, a lot of rotation, a lot of spinning, a lot of being tossed about, hit hard when you uh, when you land on the ground. So nothing like a space shuttle, which is basically like an airplane landing, very comfortable. Those retro rockets that fire a few feet off the ground make all the difference. I, I assume they do. I, it's hard to tell. I, you know, I only have one landing under my belt with the rockets, so I assume they helped. 188 days in space, your, your first long-duration mission. Was it what you expected it to be going in? You, you must have had some, some preconceptions of what it's going to be like to have to spend that much time in that place. Yeah, I think it is. You know, we do a lot of training. We do a lot of preparing for the science. We do a lot of training with the, uh, with the scientists and the investigators on their experiments. So... Uh, we, you you kind of get a good feel for what it's going to be like. And of course, I've been to the space station several times, so I knew what the living up there was going to be like. So I think it was exactly what I expected. Did it feel longer or shorter than you were expected? Well, you know, people ask me that, but the, the days go by fast. The work days go by very, very fast, but there's just a lot of those work days. 188 days is a long time. But it did, of course, you know, time goes by fast. The older you get, it seems, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it went by pretty quick. Did you get uh, enough opportunity to, to maintain contact with your family and, and friends so that you still feel connected to Oh, yes, Earth? yeah. You know, the space station, we have uh, quite a few tools to stay contact con connected with our families. We have, uh, we have the Internet, of course, with email. Uh, we have a telephone, the IP phone, and we have the uh, video conferencing once a week. So I felt very connected to my, my wife and kids and my friends. I've called friends that I haven't talked to in years. Usually I don't make many phone calls when I'm here on Earth, but I took the opportunity to call a lot of friends and all, all my family members while I was up there. That must have been quite a surprise, somebody out of the blue yeah. calling from space. Yeah, I think, they, uh, I think folks enjoy it. So it was, it was fun to talk to folks, get caught up. Do you get to feel like you live there instead of our just being visiting there? Oh yeah, you a you act you absolutely feel like you live there. I mean, you you sleep there, you eat there, you work there, and on the weekends you're there. So you are there 24/7. So you absolutely feel like you're living there for a long time. What were the most memorable events for you from this flight? 
uh, like any space mission, the most memorable events are the dynamic events, the, uh, the things like ascent and entry, the things like the spacewalks. We did several spacewalks, and of course, the visiting vehicles. It was always a fun day when a visiting vehicle came. It brought food, it brought science, it brought equipment. So it was always a great day when a visiting vehicle came. We got to open the hatch to a new uh, shiny vehicle. So th all those events are obviously very memorable. The spacewalks, as, as you mentioned, be that this has to be something of a memory since they were not expected. They were uh, they were added after you arrived. Yeah, absolutely. They were not expected in any way. But, uh, you know, the space station is getting a little older. and We have a lot of spare parts up there. So uh, the, the system is made to go out and repair these uh, components as they fail. That's how it was all designed. And, uh, yeah, we got to do a few of them and get the space station back up and running. Now, those weren't your first spacewalks, but uh, another opportunity to go crawl around on that thing must be... Uh, must be pretty exciting. Yeah, space spacewalks are a lot of work. They're very challenging mentally and physically, but they're very rewarding. It's it's great when you're out there. You get great views of the Earth. It's just uh, it's enjoyable to be working on the hardware out there. You mentioned visiting vehicles, and the station right now is uh, is has got another right. visiting vehicle, a Cygnus vehicle that should be arriving the next week. Um, that must be pretty interesting too to to do that prep work that uh, Steve Swanson and his crewmates are involved in right now uh, to brush up on the skills that will be needed to go reach out and grab that thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh we have a great trainer up there called Robot, where the uh, crew members actually can uh, practice capturing the visiting vehicles with the robotic arm. It's a great tool. It prepares the crew very well for the actual operations in the cupola. And, of course, uh, the actual day of the capture is a very exciting day. It's a very busy day for the crew, but it's also very rewarding. At the end, you have another module hooked up to the space station, a visiting vehicle, and you open the hatch, and you got all this great uh, equipment being delivered to you. And with any luck, a little fresh food. Yeah, usually there's some <laughs> a few surprises <laughs> on board that everybody really enjoys. You spent about 7 months of your life off of the planet now, which I guess is not something you expected to, was going to happen when you were a, mm. a, a young boy or right. maybe a college student. Looking forward, what's next for you now? Uh, you were you were saying a moment ago that you got some unused vacation time. Oh, yeah. Of course, I have lots of unused vacation <laughs> time, so I'm going to take some time off and enjoy myself and recharge my batteries. But uh, I think we're uh, the United States space program is coming into a very exciting time. we got Orion, and we have the commercial vehicles being developed, and we'll be launching soon in a few years. So I hope to get involved in that and the design and development of those vehicles. Rick, I, I really appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to talk about it, and welcome back. Thank you. NASA, ast NASA astronaut uh, Rick Mastracchio, back from 188 days in space.